Hello and welcome to another video. So I was looking for a cheap pre-built PC because I was thinking to build a low budget gaming system. At first the only option seemed to be a pre-built Dell HP or Acer PC with an i3 in it. But I didn't want to use one of those green motherboards with limited connection ports and awful aesthetics. So I thought it would be nice to find a PC that had at least a worthy motherboard with USB 3 ports and also potential for some upgrading in the future. As I was looking through eBay I could find some old i3 530 sitting on ASRock motherboards but I wanted something faster and a bit newer. So as I searched a little bit higher in price I found the perfect match and I bought it. Here I have in front of me a PC that I bought from eBay for 90 bucks. It has a 4th generation Core i3-4130 inside, clocked at 3.6 GHz with 2 cores, hyper-threading and integrated graphics sitting on an Asus H87 Pro motherboard with plenty of USB 3 and SATA 3 ports. In fact, the rest of the build is also really nice. It has 8 gigs of DDR3 RAM at 1600 MHz, a 430 watt Thermaltake power supply, a DVD recorder and a 500 GB hard disk and all that in a MIDI tower case. As you may already read from the title, I am planning to put a GT1030 in it. But before I install it, let's run some games using the integrated graphics just to see how bad it could be. Running CSGO at 1080p, lowest settings, it manages to run at 53 frames on average with almost no lags offering a good gaming experience experience at all times. Not bad at all. I didn't expect that it could run so well. Then I throw GTA 5 where even at lowest settings it couldn't give us more than 14 frames on average. I managed to get 23 by lowering the resolution to 720p but again it isn't what I'm looking for. But that's in the past now as it's time to install the GeForce GT 1030 and try again. CSGO again at lowest and it runs at 170 frames on average and GTA 5 using the same settings at 720p we hit 91 on average and at 1080p it manages to hold an average of 85 frames per second. Really nice but not so good looking so we pushed the graphics a bit higher and achieved over almost 60 frames on average and a really good looking gaming experience. But let's see if this setup can run few more games. I tried to set the graphics so that it can run a bit over 30 frames as that is what the console has to offer and considering our budget it is what we are after at least. I tried Battlefield 1 at high settings where the game ran smoothly making 34 frames on average. Playing Mass Effect Andromeda it was a bit harder as I should lower the graphics to medium in order to hit 30 frames on average but the game graphics still looked awesome. Last at Rise of the Tomb Raider although I lowered the graphics the game looked really nice and offered again 35 frames on average. As you see the system runs smooth and performs really nice. Despite the fact that it has only two cores, its hyper-threading helps a lot in many games resulting in a smooth gaming experience at 1080p. Remember that it can always be upgraded and handle easily an i5 CPU and a better GPU as well. The only thing that needs to be changed now is its aesthetics. You don't want your gaming setup look like that, do you? You can buy of course a new case, but we can do something else. Something that will be on a budget and it's more fun to do. So in the next video I will be doing a case modding along with DIY painting and make it look awesome at the same time. I hope at least. So stay tuned for part 2. Like if you think the video was cool and don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment. See you soon.